guys, this is history. What you've done, what it's shown. Done. You guys have built a platform that influences. Hey, out of breakfast. Club. It's, the, it's the world's most dangerous morning show. Wake the fuck up, breakfast club. DJ Envy. Envy play my record, I made it. Jess Hilarious. Jess be with <laughs> She don't spare nobody. Charlemagne the God. What made you think the liking of controversial questions would take his part? I like this show. Thanks, breakfast club. Good morning, USA. Yo 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 I almost got my voice back. It's almost there. I'm at about 88%. Good morning, Charlemagne is not here yet. Jess Hilarious is not here as well. Jess is here. What up, Jess? How you feeling, Jess? I'm feeling good, yo. You wasn't here. He didn't know. How was he supposed to know? He wasn't. Yeah, right. We was right here. No, he wasn't. Good morning, guys. How y'all feeling? Good morning. You been burning sage in here? I'm like sage. I just lit the uh, candles. Oh, okay. Oh, your voice is coming back. It's coming then. back. I'm like 88%. I'm uh, almost there. Okay. Good surgery. So when you must have, you must have got it like the day we... um. It's no surgery, man. The day man. we went off. Like, no. Literally, and then healed up. No. It take like 10 days. No, no surgery. No, I don't think... And this is Envy's thing. Envy be getting sick, but he be scared to admit that he's sick because he sit right next to a pregnant woman. So I think he just be like, no, I'm not sick. He just started coughing, sneezing, everything. And yesterday he was like, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm I'm, just, I'm I'm almost done. Yeah, after the sickness is out your system now, yeah. The sickness and the surgery so here. he's good. There's no damn surgery. It's all good, man. We respect you and love you regardless, bro. <laughs> Shout to uh, o- Olivia Rodriguez. That's her name? Yes. Olivia I can't Rodriguez. believe you sitting there acting is like Is it Rodriguez or Rodrigo? Olivia Rodriguez. Olivia Rodriguez. Is it Rodriguez or Rodrigo? I don't know who is it. Oh, is it Rodrigo? Is it o? Oh, it's Rodrigo. Rodrigo. See, you don't what even know. What she be doing? <clears throat> she had a show last night. I guess she had four sh- uh, sold out shows. So I took my daughter last night yes. to see her. Uh, and boy, did she have a great time. My daughter is 10 years old. Well, I actually didn't take her. Oh, okay. my, the oldest daughter took her, but I drove them because I don't trust New York City. So I actually gotcha. drove them. And me and the wife had a date night. But my daughter had such an amazing time and, and she said that you know she was an amazing performer yeah. she was out to like 10 o'clock I bought her one of them little cowboy hats that light up so she yeah. was super duper excited super duper stoked last night I was the best dad ever nice. dad you was the best thank you for the tickets the seats were so well so we had a good time and me and the wife we did a date night at this restaurant in uh, New York City called Tatiana's have you ever been there? no Charlamagne you been what there? what kind of food mm-hmm. is that? it's uh, fusion African and Caribbean Mm. So this guy, I guess this chef, he was on Top Chef. He's like a Michelin star, top five che- uh, mm-hmm. chef. And the food was amazing. He was actually supposed to come on the show. I don't, I don't know what happened, but mm. food was amazing. Yeah. I, but you don't like Caribbean food like that, though, right? Mm. It's, I do. It depends. It depends. But I like how you just flexed on us. Yeah, so we went to Tatiana. Did you ever been there? Yeah, it was un, like un, top five un, chefs. Five star was chef. Like, like, so funny. People just waking up trying to get biscuits no, from Chick-fil-A. I didn't. You talking about some damn stop <laughs> top five star chefs. I chef. didn't really know much about the restaurant. Somebody put me on to it, so I went All to right. go check it out. But it was dope. Like, like they have... Um, it's, it's, they have like oxtail dumplings. They have... Oh, yeah, I like stuff like they, that. They got dope stuff. Yeah, like, fusion, like it was $72 yeah. a plate. Too rich for my blood. Nah, yep. it wasn't that's that much. Why he, he but every to the end. Well, all the young kids been on Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, yeah, for at least the last three, four years. My so daughter, she's a singer. She's a singer. Got gotcha. you. Absolutely. My my daughter and her friends been on Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, I love that. it was. And then they kind of moved on. Well, she kind of moved on to SZA and Phoebe Bridges. How was your daughter? Fifteen. Huh? Oh yeah, so minus ten. Mm-hmm. So she's still on the Olivia Rodrigo yeah. phase. But yeah, it was a good show last night. So salute to uh, everybody out there. I see. I seen a lot of people out there bringing their kids there last night. So let's get the show cracking. Alice Randall will be joining us this morning. Man, Alice mm. Randall has a new book out called "My Black Country: A Journey Through Country Music's Black pra- Black Past, Present, and Future." Alice is uh, a professor at Vanderbilt, and she is the first black woman to ever write a number one country song. She wrote a number one country song for Trisha Yearwood called XXXOOOs, and uh, her new book is the next, the, the latest release off my book, book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing. So she'll be here to talk about uh, my black country. All of y'all walking around in cowboy hats, yep. okay, in cowboy boots because of Beyonce, all right? Y'all need to know something about the history of black people in country music, and she's here to tell you all about it this morning. All right, and we got front page news next, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, John Morant was in court yesterday, and the judge ruled that he was 
in in uh he was raised it says he was fairly raised self defense meaning you know he was on uh trial for allegedly punching somebody in the face and what happened was the judge said it wasn't an assault it was self defense according to court records Morant invited then 17 year old Joshua Holloway and several other players to his family's home in July 2022 to play a series of pickup games after Morant repeatedly scored on Holloway he allegedly refused to check the ball, then threw it at Morant's face. According to court documents, Morant questioned the teen, who pulled up his shorts and squared up with Morant, then Morant hit him. This week, a judge ruled Morant is protected by the state's self-defense laws. That doesn't mean the lawsuit goes away, though, just that it's an uphill battle for Holloway's legal team. Nothing wrong with that. See, I didn't know those details. I, you know, some, somebody, you know, pull up their shorts Ready to, and square up. That means that they might be about to do something to you, so you need to defend yourself. And I don't care how old they are. You think a 17-year-old can't hurt you? Oh, absolutely. Could you imagine telling that to the judge, you know, because you got to explain to the judge what pulling up the shorts means if he's not culturally... culturally no, 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 no. That's culture all over. What are you talking yeah. about? Pulling up your shorts? Put, pulling up your shorts, pulling up your pants, getting ready to fight? Yes, that ain't just a black yeah. thing. Mm. Mm. What are you talking about? That's what people I, do when they about to fight. Don't yeah. you mean? I said culture. I didn't just say black thing, but you know. Yeah. What, coach, what other culture are you talking about? What other co oh, you Dominican. Never mind. You're right. My fault. Now, also, Southwest, uh, Southwest Jet makes an emergency landing after an engine cover falls off. Now, the plane, which was a Boeing 737-800, returned safely, but there's mad videos out there where you can actually see the engine cover flying off the plane, which pushes more to people that saying that Boeing might not be putting these planes together right. Already under unprecedented scrutiny, Boeing is tonight facing new allegations. The FAA tells NBC News it's investigating new whistleblower claims, first disclosed by the New York Times, made by a Boeing quality engineer who warns the 787 Dreamliner's fuselage was improperly fastened together. In a letter to the FAA, his attorney writes it is likely to cause premature fatigue failure over time in two major airplane joints. That could cause the plane to break apart after many thousands of flights. He is uh, alleging that Boeing knowingly took a series of manufacturing shortcuts uh, mm. in the construction of the 787. Uh, people with common sense are going to say clearly somebody at Boeing isn't doing something right. Seems to me like they're trying to get things done, uh, you know, fast, fast and cheap. Right. I reported you know? this, remember? The, mm -hmm. the, about the, the Boeing. They've been doing this for years and years. Yeah, people with yeah. common sense are going to see that they're clearly trying to do things, you know, fast and cheap. People without common sense are going to blame it on DEI. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh. And lastly, uh, this is something that's going down in Newark, but they're saying that this could be affected across the country. Uh, Mayor Ross Baraka and Public Safety Director announced that beginning Friday that they're going to have uh, curfews for kids. If you're under 18 years old and uh, you have to be 100 yards from your house, and this is between 11 p.m. and 5.30 a.m., this is because they are scared of the rise of violence, so they're making kids stay home unless you're with a parent or you have to go to or from work. Or if there's anything having to do with the church or you have to go to the mosque, anything like that. But mm -hmm. the same with that, that this can be affected, you know, throughout the country. More mayors might be, you know, taking this in, making sure kids are off the street at night. What about them crazy ass adults? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know them kids be wilding, but some of these goddamn adults be wilding yeah. too. What if it's people over 18 that's out here well, wilding? Can't, you can't make the, the adults well, they, What if they the ones causing the trouble? I need to know, and I, I think that what, you know, I think Mayor Barack is a great man. Salute to Mayor Barack. I want to include bombs for Mayor Barack. Salute yep. to Mayor Barack. Yep. But I just wonder, how do they know it's just specifically the kids is what I'm saying. Hmm. That's what I would like. Well, I'm sure they know what the crime is, and, and they've been probably been arresting kids, or they've been getting kids off the streets, and they want to make sure know. the kids are off the street. I'd know? love to know. I'd love. To, I'd love to know. Yeah. Mm. Some of these crazy ass adults need to be home at a certain time too. Okay. Well, you can't just put curfew on the. You need to. Jesus. Some of them can't control themselves. All right. Sometimes you got to stop people uh, from 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 hurting themselves. All right. Well, that is front page news. Now get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051 If something's bothering you You got something on your mind Maybe your baby mama Whatever it may be Maybe your boss Your baby daddy It doesn't matter Call us up right now 800-585-1051 Get it off your chest It's The Breakfast Club Good morning The Breakfast Club It's a new day This is your time To get it off your chest Wake up Wake up Whether you're mad Or blessed It's time to get up And get something Call up now 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yeah, what's up, Envy? What's up, Trav? 
Jazz. Hey, baby. Charlemagne. What's Peace. up, Char? Peace, sis. What's happening? You recover yet? Uh, I called just to add two more things about J. Cole. Just two more things real quick. Mm-hmm. All right? Kendrick fans, I just want y'all to know, y'all better stop biting the hand that fed y'all. Because without Cole, Cole helped Kendrick get his career by introducing him to Dr. Dre. And also, he saved Kendrick Lamar from getting a drink poured on him from Diddy. So y'all better stop disrespecting <laughs> J. Cole. Well... I don't know about that. I've heard that story before. I don't understand how, you know, a guy in Compton would need somebody from North Carolina to introduce him to Dr. Dre. But here's the hey, thing. Hey. Here's the thing, Trav. I want you to remember this. When the fall off drop, everybody going to jump right back on J. Cole D. Okay? When the fall off drop, it's going to be a freak off party on social media. And all these people that's acting like they don't like J. Cole going to be the first ones at the freak off party. You know how this game goes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, well, well Sean, I, just want, I'm, I hope you make the flyers. For the freak off party, and I'll see you there, Sean. It's, I, I'll see you there when the fall off drop. It's happening. You know how this society works. It's it's, we are in a D-riding society right now. It's cool to act like you so mad at J Cole and right. J Cole killed hip hop. Yeah, when J Cole drops his new album, The Fall Off. Everybody gonna jump right back on J. Cole D. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could not like what somebody does or artist does, but the, 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 I'm hearing people like, I hate him. I'll never like him again. Oh, and I'm saying like, yeah, it just sounds stupid. <laughs> shut like, up. Sounds you be- stupid. You could not like a move that somebody makes. You could not like a song somebody makes, but all of a sudden he's the worst person ever. Stop. You'll it. be wiping your mouth when the fall off drop. Watch. <laughs> the same people <laughs> acting like they can't stand Cole now are gonna be using his penis for transportation when the fall off drops. Jesus. Oh, Hello. Yes. Crazy. Hello, who's this? Hello. Hey. Hey, it's Lima from Philly. Hey, Lima. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, Lima. Hey, Josh, congratulations, girl. I've been rooting for you from day one. Thank you so much, boo. Um, I just want to just say a little bit of positivity to everybody. I know everybody wants something, and so I just wanted to say it's going to be okay, but a little bit of positivity. And I know y'all don't control the music, but I want to see if we can get Thursday Blast uh, being ahead of people. Okay. Of course. We can make that happen for you. One of the greatest records of all time. Okay, that record right there is like therapy to me. Yeah, let's get it on. <laughs> all right, mama. We'll get it on for you this morning. Um, can I just shout my podcast out real quick? Of course. Okay. It's um, the Intellectually Opinionated Podcast. It's on um, iHeartRadio and Kitchen Okay. Hey. Thank you, mama. Hey, thank y'all. Have a good day, everybody. I love y'all. Love you more. Love, love you too. back. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Oh, my God. You got to be damn kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I'm three. Uh, oh, y- my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? This is the author. Hey y'all. Um, hey, the <laughs> author. This is the author MJL. That stands for Moist Juicy Lips. And I am calling to let Charlemagne know what happened last year at the Black and Pink Podcast to me. All right. Well, tell us about it, Moist Juicy Lips. <laughs> I want to say, hey y'all. I can't believe I'm talking with Charlemagne, MB, and Des. I love y'all. Oh my goodness. Love you too, baby. Love you more. You, you coming to the, uh, the the festival on April 27th? Hell yeah. yeah. Look, Charlemagne, I got my tickets the, the same day when you announced it. At 12 o'clock, uh, I told my daughter, uh-huh. go get those tickets, and Let's we go. are coming this year again. Thank we you very much. We had it all last year. Yeah, we go, had a go, time go. last year. We're going to have a time this year, too. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened on Charlemagne. I was almost in a fight up there at the place with Carlos Miller and Dave Green. <laughs> How are you about to fight Carlos and Nav for? <laughs> Let me tell you, they were on the stage. We waited all day for them to come, and so they started talking to the audience. And they was like, does anybody have a small business? So I started telling them about my book. I write erotica. And so I was telling them the story about the black lady. This is a, the lady in my book, the main character. Uh-huh. She was, um, let me see, giving some yes. to a white man. Yes. And Carlos got mad when I said that. <laughs> I, can, I can understand that. <laughs> no, 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 no. The book is about a black female serial killer. So it's, there was a point for that. Oh, so she ended she up killing Massa meat, right? after she had Massa's meat. It, yes, but it's a good kill, though. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Hello, Charlemagne. I I got backstage and I met you and I shook your hand. You were sitting next to Dolly Bishop. Yep. And after this um, event was over, we were waiting for you to come out. And I gave her a bag of books. She was very sweet and everything, too. I gave her three books for you. 
And I gave her a copy of Are You There, God Is You, Margaret, because you and I both loved that book. We read that when we were kids. Yeah, I was with Judy a couple so, days yeah. ago. I was, with, I was me and Judy. I spent some quality time with Judy two days ago. Judy Bloom. I know you didn't get my bags. I'm coming back this year. I need to meet you. I didn't even know y'all had VIP tickets. I'm mad that I didn't know. Yeah, all the VIP sold out, but you know, we'll, we'll, I, I, I'm sure you'll get backstage. We'll get a chance to see you. Don't say that. No, nah, I'm sure. The author and then look, we're gonna be there acting food, me and my daughter. Now we're gonna be looking out for you, Ted. Right, we're gonna that's be right. looking for you too. Jess Thank will be on that son. stage. Jess will be on that stage doing her Carefully Reckless podcast. And we got Wallow and Gilly on the stage. Horrible Decisions. The Poor Minds podcast. Just to name a few. So we'll see y'all April 27th in Atlanta, man. Make sure you go get your tickets at eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. All right. And get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up now. We got Jess with the mess coming up. Yes. Kyla Pratt drops a very important message about uh, birth. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. The news is real. Weather is real. Just Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. <laughs> she don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. I swear I be in another world sometimes, like pregnancy brain. Why, why, why? I because I'm thinking we were on a whole nother segment. I got to deliver the news right now. Yes, That's called right. Jess Crazy. with the best. I, and your I, news is real. First of all, yeah, I know, but I'm like over here chewing gum and la la land thinking about something I want to eat and I got to talk about this anyway I, hear y'all. I know Kyla Pratt talks about uh, feeling dismissed by her nurse during her second pregnancy so the latest episode of Recipe for Change which is um, a show by Tatiana Ali uh, Kyla Pratt talked about the nurse who ignored her during her uh, her birth my second pregnancy, I went into labor early mm-hmm. and being in the hospital and I told the nurse there that I was having contractions and she looked at the machine and she said, no, you aren't. Mm-mm. And I said, yes, I am. I've done this before. Go get my doctor. Mm-hmm. And luckily, standing up for myself in that moment, my daughter is here now because mm-hmm. she went to get my doctor. My doctor said, oh, you're six centimeters dilated. Now we have to do an emergency C-section. Wow. Uh, but because I was so small, it wasn't showing up on the machine. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, I didn't really recognize when people weren't listening to me because I was young, mm-hmm. um, because I'm black mm-hmm. and because I'm a woman. That's why the black maternal death rate is what it is, because these doctors don't take black women serious when they tell them something's wrong. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and I love to hear us uh, black black women speaking on healthcare experiences like that. That's another reason why, remember I was telling both of y'all, I don't want to have my baby in the hospital. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do this in like a birthing center or I want to do home birth. Like mm-hmm. that's why it's important for midwives and doulas and, and more more black women mm-hmm. to be um in this, in that industry, you know, we need more health, black healthcare workers. And and, and those doulas can catch things that you know, like uh, Kyla said, she she mm-hmm. she missed mm-hmm. when she was mm-hmm. like, you know, she didn't know right. to stand up for herself mm-hmm. and things like that. Those doulas, that's what those doulas are for to yep. fill in those gaps. Yeah, right. and to talk for you. And, that's right. Because you in you in pain. You're in pain. Yeah. You, you, yep. you, your mind is everywhere. Or you haven't experienced it before. Like most yeah. times, their first experience, so they don't know what they're experiencing, yeah. what their body's going through. So yeah. Yep. Yep. And like I said, I I tell people now more openly open about it now when I was having ash and I had an epidural and mm-hmm. I you know and the doctor was like so this student is gonna do your epidural what and I yeah and I'm young you know I'm, I'm 20 I'm like yo I'm hurting whatever whoever gotta do it do it and I had to be stuck twice yes. like that that needed when you're back and you gotta be careful and you gotta stay as still as you can because you can be paralyzed that's right mm. so I just wish that I would have sued and got that money and I wouldn't have to be able to y'all. No. <laughs> but, Salute to all the doulas so. out there, though. Because doulas are important, even with guys, right? Because when you a guy and you see your woman in pain like yeah. that... You bugging out. You be talking to the nurses and everybody crazy. So mm-hmm. salute to all the doulas that uh keep things calm. Drop on the clues bombs for Latham Thomas. Miss Glow Maven. She 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 was our doula for our last last two. Mm. Yes. Nice. Billy D. Williams says actors should be allowed to wear blackface. Um he has sat down with Bill Maher on his podcast and they were talking about the white actor who played a black character in the movie Othello. So we had to say Today, that. I mean, they would never let you do that. Why? Blackface? Why you, not? Because you should do it. That's your point of view. You should, th- if th- you're th- an actor, you should do anything you want to do. I 
That's a great point of view, but the theater would be bombed. As an actor, you should be able to do whatever you think you can do, you should be able to do it. The point is... And that's a great attitude, but it still did happen. But I mean, but and the Paul point is, comes from an era... You don't go through life feeling like I'm a victim. Correct. I couldn't agree with that more. While I understand the end part, I do understand, like, you can't go through life feeling like a victim... Does he not know where blackface came from and how, like, I, I mean, I just, I was, I was rather shocked to hear his take on that. Um, and Bill Maher kept trying to bring it back. Like, no, nah, yo, this is, you know, but, but like I said, mm -hmm. he not thinking about it from that per point of view. He was more so like. An actor can do anything. If you're an actor, that's yeah. what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you push limits and you do things that you wouldn't mm -hmm. do in your real regular life. You're acting. Yeah, but uh, blackface is just a specific thing, though, because it's the practice yeah. of non-black performers, and they used to put the, you know, the black paint on their face to portray caricatures mm -hmm. of black people. Right. So it would also, it would always, it, all, it would always be like these offensive yeah. stereotypes of black people yeah. making us look the worst. Right. So mm -hmm. no, you shouldn't be allowed to wear. Black face, no. but I, you know, I, I can see uh, his, pushing the limit. Yeah, yeah, but, I can see his argument for people being able to to, to act as, yeah. as, as as black people. And then the movie in, in Othello, the the white guy, he he said Billy D said he fell out laughing because they mm -hmm. put a big ass on a character. That's 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 offensive. That's that, a character. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah so. I just don't see what the need for that would be. Yeah, like you <laughs> need to do. Like there's plenty of black actors and actresses out here. We don't need no white people. We don't pretending. <laughs> to be black people at this point. I don't see the need for that in 2024. And I think Billy Dee's 88 years old, right? Or 90 yeah, years old, somewhere he's, up there. He's, he's up, there. up there. He is? He that old? Mm -hmm. He has been around for a long time. And he looks good. Too. He still looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Zendaya wishes she would have went to school instead of being a child actor. So she recently spoke to Vogue about working at just 14 years old and her becoming the breadwinner of the family very early. She, uh, she got her start um, in 2010 on Disney show Shake It Up. And she said she feels like she's going through her teenager phase right now, you know, as a grown woman, because mm -hmm. she didn't really get to have a childhood. She didn't get to live out her teenage years as a teenager because she was always working. Um, she quoted, I'm very tense. And I think that I carried that from being a kid and never really having an opportunity to just try it. And I wish I went to school. So and they're basically saying she tired of y'all. Yeah. yeah, she's so tired. Yeah. She's been working for a long, 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 long time. And stuff like that okay. makes me sad because I'm like, oh. Like she really wished that she could have a childhood, and and that was that was like that's a lot of these kids, a lot of these actors that we watch on TV and yeah. that I grew up watching, like you know, like China, the the late uh, the the McLean sisters, China McLean, and all of them mm -hmm. younger kids, and they wanted childhoods, like. But there's some people that she started when she was like, uh, she was 14, like Murray Kate and Ashley Austin. Mm -hmm. They started when they was two years old. You know, their first role was on Full House. So I just be like, dang, do they all feel like that? I hate that Zendaya is growing up, to be honest with you, because yeah. whatever I saw the, the trailer for the new movie she in, and she kissing two boys at the same time. And then yeah. before that, you had Euphoria. So when you got children that grew up off Casey Undercover, and they just like Zendaya, they yeah. want to see all of this, too. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn. I always wonder with childhood actors and childhood performers, like, because the parents have to give up their lives to make mm -hmm. sure that they can support the child that they're there, so they don't have a Nickelodeon type of thing, right? Yep. So you got to make sure you're there. So you sacrifice your your life for your kids which is fine mm -hmm. but then when your kids get to an age when do you let them go because your whole life has been your kids yeah your whole finances have been your kids yeah so I wonder how that works because we've we seen him with Britney Spears father and all these other dads yeah. like <clears throat> but I understand it and because now, the yeah. parents had to give up their lives yeah. right but now all of their relationships are estranged just look at Britney and her father. You're right. Because they probably feel like they was getting pushed when they didn't want to get pushed and they probably mm -hmm. been want to quit and the parents were like, no, we got to get this money. We got to pay this okay? break. Now that they're old enough to understand right. that they was nothing but indentured servants, they like, F y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm sick of this. <laughs> All right. Well, that was just with the mess. Absolutely. All right. When we come back, we'll tell you about this man who's suing 50 women who uh, put on, I guess, some type of app that he was a bad date. Oh, my God. That's right. <laughs> well, it's not... <laughs> Them, sir, it's you. Well, we'll talk about it when we come back. It's <laughs> okay. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. All right. Now, I'll just tell you some clip stories. Of course, we had the eclipse on Monday, but some people weren't too happy. In Mexico, they showed the clips 
on TV, and uh, they got in trouble because they accidentally showed a man's testicles instead of the solar eclipse. Oh my God! That's uh, that, first of all, first on the TV screen, <laughs> so it was supposed yeah. to be there, and they accidentally showed a man's testicles. How? I need to see. Why y'all ain't showing me this before we got on the air? Y'all supposed to show to me see. these type of things. <laughs> yes, I want to see how this happened. You want to see? Yes, I want to see how these type of things happen. We have the footage. We'll show you in a second. That don't even make any sense. But if somebody left a comment was like, "I didn't expect to see the eclipse. I didn't expect to see." testicles I would expect to see Uranus instead of the <laughs> what was the man doing though like why was he even they on camera they were screen mad fast so it was I guess they went to the footage of supposed to be showing the eclipse and it showed the man's testicles I don't know how the testicles got yeah, why into did the man? But, but why did this man just have his testicles out <laughs> what's going on in Mexico I, I he was minding his business like that was supposed to be streaming somewhere else that yeah, wasn't for but, us but clearly it was in the public like yeah. why are you just out with your nuts hanging in the public I, 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 I don't know how they messed that up. Also, <laughs> yeah. uh, somebody came up with this bright idea to have an eclipse flight where a flight was $1,000, and it was a Delta flight, actually, and it would be flying where you could actually see the eclipse in the air. Well, because of the clouds, the people that paid $1,000 could not see it. <laughs> so they got some goodie bags. They got a hat, socks, and a moon pie, and sun chips. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't get their thousand. I saw, I saw one hey, of those. Yo, what airline that is, yo? That was Delta, actually. <laughs> oh my god, for real? Yeah, for real. And I'm a Delta member. That's Me clowned out. Yeah, that's I saw that in Jersey oh when, I was, when, when I was looking at the eclipse Monday. Mm -hmm. There was a plane that flew by, and I said that I was like, I said, I wonder if that's a plane just for the eclipse because it was like a smaller plane, right? Yeah, yep. I'm sure it was. Jesus. Now this man is suing 50 women for calling him a bad date. Now this guy's in California. He's lashing out at 50 women on Facebook for allegedly saying that his date was horrible and that he was whack and that he was trash and here's the women that he is suing two of them actually it's very bizarre the accusations they're baseless i feel not just for myself but for my co-defendants and for the other women that he's he's gone after olivia berger and vanessa valdez are just two of multiple women being sued for defamation libel sex-based discrimination and other allegations by stewart lucas murray He's basically suing us for $2.6 million in damages. It all started with this post on the Facebook group, Are We Dating the Same Guy? When Olivia and Vanessa saw the post and all the comments, they added their own experiences. He seemed, in my opinion, pretty smug and very arrogant. The entire date, he was putting me down for various things, um, my job included. Vanessa never went on a date with Murray because she says she didn't like the messages he sent her. At one point, even calling her a moron. <laughs> I didn't know you could sue anybody. For, well, I didn't That's know you could sue I... anybody for anything, but the fact that you could just sue somebody for calling them a bad date, but like, if the date was on, bad... Bro. And they're all 50 bitches. <laughs> all 50 of them. All 50 of them. Well, he talks about why he's doing it. Mm. We contacted Murray for comment, but he declined an on-camera interview. Instead, he directed us to this website with a long statement that says in part, This action is not a game, and the accusations against the defendants are serious. I rejected each of them and cut them off quite swiftly. Instead of going their separate ways, they went on for months and years to spread misinformation about me and mm. countless others. Their actions were deliberate, and they are now playing the victims, unquote. Yeah, so he's suing these women for $2.6 million. And not going to win. I don't think he's going to win. Uh, it's like, what are you doing? You spending more, more money going to court for 50 women. Mm-hmm. Then you're gonna ever get. This is weird. Yeah, very weird. So basically, it's like a defamation thing. Defamation suit, yep. But you're not famous. <laughs> Saying he's messing up his name. And lastly, we got to talk migrants. Now, uh, a crew of Venezuelan migrants with rap sheets allegedly uh, targeted uh, Target. Yes, they went in Target. They ransacked the Target, take things out of Target, and then when the when the cops came, they allegedly beat up the cops. Now, the accused criminals oh were part of a, a crew of six that allegedly yanked uh, items off displays in the store and did a whole bunch of other things. And because of the bail reform, these guys were pretty much released right after. Where is this? It's in New York. You oh saw you saw the stuff they were stealing, like, uh, you know, cereal and, you know. They were basically Fruit stealing Loops, essentials. Yeah, Doritos, like, yeah. strawberries, bottled waters, yeah. and things like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I told y'all weeks ago that America doesn't have the resources for this influx of migrants. And, like, most people who can't get by in this country, the migrants are going to resort to what? To survive. Mm -hmm. Crime.
Okay, and when you look at what they stole, you see that it's just some essentials to survive. Yeah. You know? But this is a problem of America's own creation. Because never forget, uh, Mayor Adams said New York was a sanctuary city. Well, so those governors from Texas and Florida sent them right on over. Well, mm. This is what Mayor Adams said because of what's everything that's going on. What I said, even with those who are undocumented and those who are migrants and asylum seekers, if you are a repeated offender of a violent act in this city, after you serve your time, you need to leave this city. That is my position. People should not come here and be violent to everyday citizens of this city and to other migrants and asylum seekers. Because some of the incidents we're seeing, they're attacking other migrants and asylum seekers who just want to come here and pursue the American dream. Is that considered a violent act, though? I mean, they shoplifted and then I guess they... Resisted arrest. Beating up the police. Well, yeah, they beat yeah. up the police. They didn't, I don't know if they beat him up. Well, they, they threw rocks arrest. at the officer. One officer was taken to a hospital. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. You don't think they beat him up, but they just threw rocks at him. That shouldn't be a biggie. Yeah, but think about what they were doing. I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just okay. saying they were trying to survive. They were stealing out of a store mm -hmm. because they needed food. Mm -hmm. Th is throwing rocks considered violent? Yes. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> okay. What are you talking yeah, about? Yes, throwing rocks is violent, but like you said, they were, they were trying officers. to get They got food. guns. They got batons. They, you know what I'm saying? They were, it's not, a violent act to me is like you know running up in the store and actually causing somebody bodily harm just for the sake of causing them bodily harm. They weren't doing that. Well, they said they wrestled, shoved, slapped, and pushed them in an attempt to resist. Mm -hmm. The wild struggle left one officer with swelling, redness, and pain on his left arm. He was taken to the local hospital where he was treated and released. Well, Another suspect who has not been caught was throwing rocks at the officer. Offices, but the officers were not struck. Well, never forget, uh, Mayor Adams said New York was a sanctuary city. Right. So those governors from Texas and Florida sent them right on over here. So now you got to deal with those uh, deal with those issues. All right. Hmm. Well, that is front page news. All right. Now, when we come back, 800-585-1051. Let's talk DDG and Chloe Bailey. Now, DDG recently did an interview. And during the interview, he talked about uh, trying to get Chloe Bailey jealous while she was there. And he texted his ex, DM'd his ex. Crazy. Something like, I miss you or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we're asking, 800-585-1051. Mm -hmm. What's the dumbest thing you did to make your ex jealous? To make that your was, girl jealous? That was so clowned out. But he that's the thing. He said he had did it in front of her and he had no intention on linking up with Ruby. But he just texted her and said, like, what you doing? He didn't say I miss you or nothing like that. I think he said, because that's what he said. He said, I just said, what you doing? And he did it in front of her just to get her attention. But why would you be so clowned out mm -hmm. to trigger Ruby and to trigger the pregnant woman that you're with? Because he's trying to prove that he got hoes. And you know what I'm saying? He ain't got no hoes. Just ain't got dumb, no hoes. yo. Like, know, Holly know you ain't got no hoes. Sit your dumb ass right, down. Right, and, and, and Ruby <laughs> knows this too. Like, why, but why, if you know the type of girl that Ruby is, why would you trigger that person again? They right. still want me in these streets. Like, okay, yeah. I'm still hot out here. Yeah. Watch this. Nope. Watch this. 585 What's the dumbest thing you did to try to get your girl or your man jealous? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Dude. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about DDG and uh, Halle Bailey. All right. Now, DDG said that um, to get, I guess, to get Halle Bailey jealous, he DM'd his ex, Ruby Rose. <laughs> A clown. It's so funny, man. That's just really some young boy stuff, yeah, man. You sitting is. around with the woman of your dreams, the woman you mm -hmm. love, the woman you having a family with, mm -hmm. y'all having a little spat. You want her to think that you still got it and you can walk out this house and just go into the arms mm -hmm. of another woman knowing yep. don't nobody want your ass no yep. more. Okay, so you just <laughs> had to send that out real quick to try to make her jealous. And she like, nigga, you, what? And you ain't going nowhere. I don't right, care. not going nowhere. I'm the Little Mermaid, what? <laughs> Little Mermaid. <laughs> It was a clown. <laughs> Jess, have you done this before? No, I ain't gonna hold you. No, I haven't done it. And now I haven't done it to make somebody mad. I did it because I was mad, but I didn't want that person to find out. Oh. Like, all right, I, I did like double back on somebody that I was talking to when, <laughs> uh, like, a current boyfriend had made me mad or something like that. But I didn't do that to get his attention. 
I did that just because he had made me mad, and I just didn't want to deal with him at the time. Like, all right, whatever. Got let you. me hit this so other cheated. dude back. Absolutely. Okay, all right. I, I did. Get, I get what you Okay. All First right. First of all, Envy, all right, like... You, <laughs> what? I'm just asking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You beat around the bush. You trying to play you just now? Right. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I ain't do that to stress the guy out. All right. All right. Well, let's go to the phone. <laughs> yeah, I ain't do it. Yeah. Cheating's not going to stress him out? <laughs> well, going to stress him out. <laughs> Hello, Bree. Hey. Good morning. Hey, girl. So, I was basically saying that the craziest thing I did to get back with the ex was get full blown, dressed up, hair done, like made sure I looked the baddest that I could look and told him that I was gonna go out there and do the same thing he was doing. But really, I just was sitting in the parking lot or like <laughs> driving around to like my old apartment just to <laughs> kill some time and come back like two o'clock in the morning and make it seem like I had the time of my life. Or really, I would just get my car being miserable. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. Wasting gas. Wasting girl. gas. That's sad. Wasting gas. Like going, walking around Walmart in fully yeah. clothes. Looking like you just came doing. from church. <laughs> Did it work? I, I, see, not church. Because, you know, the stuff that I was wearing, you couldn't wear the church. Right. But I, I, I made sure I looked that way so he was under the impression that I was about to be out there in the street. Right. Did he call you? But was he calling he, you and texting yeah. you while you was out? No, but when I got back, he would, we, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't even be talking. Like he, he would be so unfazed by it, and it would just piss me off even more. So, so it was just so not worth back, it. So you it went back just, out so in the garage. You, you went back, back outside. Garage. Yeah, I would. We, I would just go back outside and sit in my car, act like I was mad, and leave again, oh, and wow. just be driving around. Damn. Oh my. Man, God. humans are some stupid people. Yes. Oh my. I mean, we are God. ridiculous. I mean, we are we are really ridiculous. You said, did you call us? Did he call you? No. no. <laughs> so it didn't even work. Damn. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Nautica. Hey, Nautica. What you well, did to baby. your ex? To, 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 well, what did you do to your man to make him jealous? I did the same thing. Um, I called him texting somebody. So I had to tell him, you ain't the only one out here who can have somebody. So I called somebody in front of him. Let him know that he was on the phone. I told him I was on the way to his house. And what he do? <laughs> he chased behind me. He, <laughs> he did what? He chased behind me. He caught you out for the ghost. Hold on, you saying that last part a little low? Yeah. He choke slam you? What'd you say? No, I said he chased behind my car, trying to see where I was going. Oh, oh, oh okay, mm. okay, 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 okay. And you wasn't going no damn place, the Walmart. Say what? You you wasn't going nowhere but the Walmart. I was going nowhere. <laughs> That's crazy. I better stop playing with these people. <laughs> Absolutely. I better stop playing with these people. Why don't we understand proper communication skills, though? Why can't we just be honest with each other? And, and just talk. Just talk. Like, yeah. All this goofiness for no reason. Oh, and then she, oh my God. Then I was, I'm so mad with DDG because Hallie was pregnant. Mm. Like, all you had to do was be like, all right, look, what's up? What's wrong with you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever mm. the argument was about. She hormonal. She pregnant. And you gonna hit Ruby? Mm -mm -mm. What is wrong with you? CC. Hey, how y'all doing? CC, what you did to make your man jealous? So, at the time, I, we worked with special education, so we dealt with a lot of students who had crisis, and I worked with my boyfriend at the time. And so, he didn't call me for like the whole day. He wasn't answering my phone calls. So, I had my friend call him, continue with my phone, and tell him that I was in crisis. So, he had to come to me. Like, it was real drastic and extra. So, I had to think like I was having a panic attack, and... Oh my god! So you told me it you went to the emergency good. room. It was bad. So you told me you went to the emergency I, room. I didn't go to the emergency room. No, I mean I made it seem like it was drastic. Like I really Damn. needed him to be there. It was bad. Yeah. Like, and what did how did he react? Like how did he react? He was he was attentive and everything or whatever, but I can kind of tell he was kind of like. I don't know if I really want to be in this. I guess I made it worse for the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> like I kind of made it seem like I was dramatic and mentally unstable, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure did. Thank you. Yeah. That's just like Carly Russell when she said she saw the baby walking down the highway. Cool. Just to all that to get yeah. that guy's attention. You're right, just to get his attention. Mm -mm -mm. What happened to communication? Yeah. Sitting down, having a conversation. That man didn't want to talk to her, so that's why she had, She said that she saw a baby walking down the highway and she had to <laughs> save him. And also, think about it like this. What's more embarrassing, doing all of this goofy stuff y'all calling up here doing or yeah. just talking to a person and telling them how you feel? Right, talking to you a You know person. what I'm saying? Like being for real about your emotions. Yeah. That might be a little embarrassing. But, that might hurt a little bit, but not like not as much as this stupid stuff y'all yeah, doing. But the problem is, is, these guys don't want to talk to them. 
That is the problem. So they're That's trying to why. get the attention. Yeah. That's why she said the emergency room. That's why she said, all right, I'm going to go out. And I'm going to uh-huh. wear the flyest clothes and put the, on my nice outfit. I want to get you know. jealous so you want to talk to me and you just driving around Walmart. He don't care, right. And that's going to make me, that's going to push me away further because I'm going to be like, I thought she was crazy. Now I know she crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and what if and what if the guy had her location the whole time, right? It was like, you ain't even going away. He was in the garage the whole time, <laughs> damn it. Hey, yo, stupid. 800-585-1051. What did you do to get your, your boyfriend or girlfriend jealous? Let's discuss. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Call, 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 call. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Halle Bailey and DDG. Now, DDG recently said that... Uh, he texted, or I should say, DM Roby Rules in front of Haley to make her jealous. So we're asking, what's the dumbest thing you did to make your ex or make your girl jealous or man jealous? Shay, what up, Shay? Hey, how you doing? What you did to make your man jealous, Shay? Well, we was a lot younger, but I used to put on clothes and dress up and take pictures on Instagram like I'm going to the club so he could see. Hmm. And your ass never left the house? No, never left. He should have blocked you. <laughs> that made it worse. <laughs> well, we still get we still together this day, so I know that's right, girl. So it worked out. <laughs> what what about the get back okay, though? What it. what if a guy would what if he just posted a woman's feet on his Instagram? Oh, that's, right. <laughs> that's too far. <laughs> well, that that's definitely going too far, and yeah. that's definitely just stupid. I bet your ass wouldn't act like you was going to the club. You the guy dressed and went right this house. Uh uh-uh, <laughs> then I would have really posted somebody else rubbing my feet. See? See, that's just how it goes. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. Now, we're talking about things, stupid things you did to try to make your man a, a woman jealous. Okay, so I stuck date, well, I date my best friend's cousin, and um, we got into a bad argument. We stopped talking for about two weeks, and during that time, I had got drunk, little drunk, and I ended up um, sleeping with my kid's dad. So my best friend knew my location and she told him that she she told the guy I was dating that I, I was at my kid's dad's house. So he went to do the same thing, but he ended up getting his baby mom pregnant. Ooh. Y'all play too much. That tip for tat thing, that yeah, that ain't always much. safe, huh? Mm-mm. No, it's not. But but look, tell the truth. So so you you really was never over your baby daddy, though, were you? To do something like that? No, I I listen. I really don't even like my baby dad. He just happened to have my kids that night, and when I came to get them, I was a little tipsy. So he, you know, he let me stay in his place, and it just happened. She wanted to get that familiar oh, pipe. God. <laughs> I wonder what makes you what makes you think a man gonna take you back after something like that. Though. Yes, and he like, went to go sleep with his baby mother, but he got his baby mother pregnant. Damn. Yeah, he, he he did he did worse. And he, but he um, did it in retaliation to what you did, and you your best friend it. a clown because your best your best friend definitely dimed you out. But I'm just saying. Yeah, he, I know she did. Mm. And she mm. probably slept with both of them. Oh my god. Huh? <laughs> 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 she slept with both of your men. Bet you. Thank you, Mama. <clears throat> Hello, who's this? <laughs> she probably like, hold on. Lynn. Hey, Lynn, good morning. Lynn. Now, Lynn, Lynn. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you, Lynn. Now, Lynn, what yeah. you did, Lynn? I was date. Me and my spouse was together, and he wanted to be single for a little while. So I decided to date his co-worker. You said you and your what? I said me and my spouse decided to take a break for a little while, but the first person I dated was his co-worker, and he had to see him every day at work. This is your husband? Yes. Okay, so you and your spouse oh, play too much. Yeah. Did what now? Because I, I was caught up in something. Else. I you and your spouse he did said what? He wanted. He said he wanted to be single, so I allowed a break. And the first person I dated was his coworker, and he knew he knew who the guy was. So he went up dapping the guy up, being weird to the guy, and he was like, "Why is he talking to me? If he know me, and he's talking." I was like, "I have no idea." He's single. Why would you do that though? See, 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 yeah, stuff like Mary. that is so foul because in your, in my mind, you always wanted that co worker. That's right. Yeah. You was always, you always had yeah. eyes for that man. Yeah. That ain't just thought. And at least he told you. Actually, no, he was just collateral damage. I just want him to show him that if you want to be single, I can be single too with someone you know. No, <laughs> but with someone you know, that's the that's crazy, crazy part. And then he was honest. He told you, I want to be single. He ain't go cheat on. He told you, I want to be single. And you went to go sleep with his co worker. Jesus. 
I didn't sleep with the co-worker. I just went on a date with him. Nope, you slept uh, with him in my mind. Yeah, yeah, man. You slept uh, with him, absolutely. you gave him fellatio, uh, all of that. Y'all still together? No, mind. no. We're still together. We're still together. He got pissed and told me, tell him it's over. It's long. He still work there? Yeah, they still see each other. Jesus Christ. Nah, I, nah we, uh, we, we be fighting. Uh, 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 I mean, ain't nothing to fight over. Cause I got, nothing if happened. I, yeah, if I, if I love you... We together. You told me nothing happened. It nothing don't, happened. Don't I didn't cross no the line. But, but you my coworker. You know that's yeah, my, he wife. Crossed he the line. my wife. He crossed the line. He slept with other people, even though we were single. I feel like he crossed the line, and I did, and I think I did good. Now see, there you go. See, you didn't. You left those details out. Now see. Well, he, but did he sleep okay. with them before he told you that he wanted to be single? Well, you don't. No, want to he he did it after. See? He did oh. it after. But to think you could just come back with no repercussions? Come on. I came to you and told you I, I told you I wanted single, to be single. You said, and you cool. said all right, cool. I did it. But she was on some get back. I didn't want to be single. I I didn't want to be single. So I just went with the program because so I love them. you say no. That's what you say. You say no. Whoa, look. Why did you get married? Why did you marry me if you wanted to be single? We need to go through with a divorce. And you see how that go. Girl, I should slip. But, the man, but to, to be fair, both of y'all was single. So whatever y'all did when y'all was single yeah. is what y'all did. Yeah, but it's a different single. Like, Not she's really. dating a homie. Not really. Yes. She went on a date with the guy that he worked with. He slept with mad that, girls. That's, that's yeah. worse. You put it on and the scale. I went to our favorite spot. What you did? I went to our favorite spot. And, then, and he saw us. And he was like, whoa. Whoa. But he was with a chick, too. She just was ugly. That's what I'm saying. Men, that's men, too much. No, it's not. Men, 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 men can't handle the get back. And she no. ain't even sleep with the guy. They play too. Wait, that's what she's telling us. Damn. No. Nope. All right. Well, what's the moral of the story? After that last story, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, the moral of the story is just communicate. Word. Just communicate, yo. Like trying to make somebody jealous. And look, and listen, yo, you said DDG is a young guy. Obviously, that don't matter the, the age, cause they ain't young. That's right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You, it, age don't matter. Just communicate, yo, and be honest. You, you, go. you going out your way to hurt yourself, trying to hurt some, thinking you hurting somebody else, and it don't affect nobody but you. That's right. Crazy. All right. Well, we got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yes, we do. Damn it. Azalea Banks is reading people for filth. Again, here we are. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get right to Jess with the mess. The news is real. The news is real. Lions, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture ship. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see it's time to set it off so tyler the creator responds to azalea banks saying he and lil nas x should get over white bussy and be a power couple oh <laughs> we know every now and then azalea come out and she say her piece and she go back wherever she be at but she recently made a post um saying that Tyler the Creator and Lil Nas should just stop dating white men and date each other. That's what that mm. meant. Uh, this post came after Tyler was on the, Jar the Gerard Carmichael show and Gerard had expressed having deep feelings for him. I did not see that. Are you going to see that? No. Yeah. He, he, I, I think they're best friends and he said that, you know, he okay. wanted to be in a relationship At with Tyler. At one point. And what did Tyler say? I think he laughed. Damn. It was something disrespectful. He didn't, they he didn't take friends, him serious. Because Jesus Christ. Yeah, he didn't take him serious. <laughs> okay. What if they both bottomed Lil Nas X and Tyler the Creator? Then they be a power bottom couple? Hmm? I don't know. I Maybe. mean, I don't know how that works because I'm not in that community. Mm. I don't know. And I'm not a man, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. You would know more about tops and bottoms than me. <laughs> I'm thinking about clothes when people say tops and bottoms. I'm like, oh, a shirt and some jeans? <laughs> okay. But no. So Tyler had saw this and he said, what the hell? Like, he laughed. And it was like, you know, he just took it as a it's joke. It's actually hilarious. Yeah, it is. And okay. Lil Nas responded and said that she is right. Me and Tyler should F. Oh. <laughs> we know how uh, Lord knows is. He's straight, straight shooter. Oh. <laughs> Technically, you know, literally, he is. He... This white bussy sound hilarious. Yeah. Little pink bussy. <laughs> Stop <laughs> sleeping with that pink bussy. Get masses meat out of your... Hey. And, and get to your own, is what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what she's saying. We know it's Elliot. And she also um, said had some things to say about Dochi, but Dochi clapped back at her for saying that Dochi is an ugly version of her. Um, she was recently on Instagram and she posted some audio and she called Dochi a wannabe and an ugly version of her. With this anger for so long and they find this kind of like ugly version of 
well, she's not even a virgin. She's just ugly. And I hate to call a dark-skinned girl ugly because she just is ugly. She'd be ugly if she were light-skinned. They find this ugly girl, and they try to sick her on the Taylor Banks. I'm listening to men basically tell me that they are too afraid to f with Azealia Banks, so they need me to go fight a for them. Huh? I'm confused. That, yeah, yeah, I, I got confused at the audio, too. too. But she's basically saying, like, like Dochi was sent to, like, take her place. Like, you Dochi know, fire. Dochi been fire. fire. Drop fire. on the food bombs I'm talking about the pen, her choreography, her mm -hmm. beats, her work. I, I love her. I've been on for a few years now. And I love how TDE mm -hmm. rolls out artists because they just take yes. their time. Like, I was literally talking to somebody yesterday about artist development and the lack thereof. Mm -hmm. TDE is a label that still does artist development. And yeah. that's why when he, you finally start to notice somebody like Dochi, I think she just had a number one record, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you finally start to notice her, She's almost ready. Yeah. She's right. ready, but she's been out for some years now. Right. For some years yeah. now, and but I, I love I love her music from old to new. Um, don't you clap back saying for the first time you the first time you came at me I let it slide out of respect for my elders. It's my fault. You it's not my fault. You selling bussy soap, and I'm selling platinum records. Leave me alone, please. So their beef supposedly started in 2022 when Azalea Banks agreed to do a collaboration with Dochi. And then Azalea randomly went on Twitter and began trash talking Dochi and, um, and the release of her song and the label TDE. Speaking of them, um, Azalea Banks said TDE is going out effing sad. What the F is even happening with TDE? And she also said uh, you have this effing Dochi chick who is no who I have no effing clue who she is. And at that time, Dochi went on Twitter, expressed her confusion at what the issue was about. And um, she basically was just like, she this, was, she, this is so much grace. She said, I'm not sure. Sometimes people have been hurt so many times. They develop, when people have been hurt so many times, they develop a defense and they end up creating the illusion of problems because they won't allow themselves, themselves to accept something good trauma responses I was respectful excited and grateful to make art with her you know what I got out mm. of all of that why was that that Azalea Banks is selling Bussy Boy soap and I just googled it I'm about to <laughs> order two bars just because this is hilarious I know that's right Bussy Boy it says make that bussy beam boy <laughs> helps with irritation due to friction from rough anal sex stubborn hemorrhoids jock itch and bacterial overload and you're gonna buy two Jeez, bars this is that's... hilarious I'm, I absolutely I am supporting you this you gonna buy it <laughs> That's so cute. I had no idea. I just <laughs> when you read that about uh Dochi saying she's selling Bussy Boy soap, I Googled it. Yes. <laughs> I'm buying something right now. It's gonna Yo. be up in this studio. <laughs> How much is the Bussy Boy? Seven dollars. Okay. Seven dollars. Wow. Brandon. Get on your laptop. Parents, <laughs> <laughs> you should get I on your laptop. I use my laptop. <laughs> I use my laptop. Ray, do we got audio for this next story or no? Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. So, woman goes through intense chemo after terminal diagnosis only to find out she never had cancer at all. What? Yep. So, last year, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was given about 15 months to live if we were being optimistic. I had to prepare my two children and my husband and my family that I probably wouldn't be here this year. I had to undergo very intensive chemotherapy. Overall, I had a pretty traumatic year. What kind of cancer do you think I had? Any guesses? None. I never had cancer. Mm. Oops. So that was fun. Mm. They misdiagnosed me and put me through chemotherapy. Yep, she's 39. She initially went to the hospital in 2022 for stomach pains that she suspected were related to kidney stones, and they told her that she had cancer. And then how about when she tell her doctor, like, yo, whole time I ain't have cancer. He congratulated her instead of Damn. saying sorry. He was like, oh, that's amazing then. Damn. Like, what? You told me I did. And this goes back to what she was at, like, mm -hmm. well, like, like the Holly Berry thing. When when she went to the doctor and he told her that she had herpes. Mm -hmm. She had herpes. Um, when he, she described her symptoms to him. And he said, this is the worst case he's ever seen. And remember, he was like, you can't sue for that. Yeah. Like, I really, really I want. Should be able to yeah, yeah. But none of these cases say that they're suing. It's weird. I hope she does. I hope she does. Because to go through, you know how expensive that is, these chemo treatments and yeah. all that, even though insurance may have covered it, I never had it. But what about so, her mental? Right. For the 15 months, that right. she thinks she only had 15 months to live? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. So I guess we mm -mm -mm. keep up with that story. But that was, that was, that was, um, wrong. And that, and that doctor said, oh, that's good. And that's what's up. That's crazy. Wow. 
So All that's right. just for the mess for that hour. Frodo, I need somebody to help me navigate through this. Come stuff. on, Charlemagne. No, because they got boy, nope. they got boyberry blue. Georgia peach scents. This is so funny. It oh, says, really? for that glazed donut hole effect, you said, you said this is hilarious. Azalea Banks is really funny, y'all. Yeah, no, she I'm, is. I'm and just, she's talented, too. Yes. They got something called Hoochie Do. <laughs> <laughs> D-E-W? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hoochie Do. <laughs> uh, it won't let me order, though. I said I want two Because you don't have a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. We don't know what he has or what he identifies as. <laughs> no, I, I, I definitely got a bussy. It just ain't never been turned into one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your bussy ain't been activated. Hey, ain't been act- <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I don't got time. Oh, my goodness. Who you giving that, oh you giving that bussy to? Hey, four after the hour, um, we need a Southfield, Michigan man named Aaron Brown to come to the front of the congregation. I keep telling y'all these fast food restaurants ain't dying for you. We'll discuss. Mm. All right, Doug, the day's up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne. Some donkey today just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlemagne. I was ready for it. I never heard of a donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlemagne. I'm a donkey. Yes, you are a donkey. Y'all so how to act a donkey. Everything that Charlemagne is saying is true. Yes, donkey today for Wednesday, April 10th goes to a 32-year-old Southfield, Michigan man named Aaron Brown. Salute to Detroit. What up, doe? Uh, drop on the clues bombs for everybody who listens to us on 97.9 WJLB. What's happening? Now, one of the things we don't discuss enough in our society is portions. Okay, we speak about portions when it comes to people. Salute to the Big Back Brigade. Drop on the clues bombs for the Big Back Brigade. You are appreciated. If you're listening to me right now, I pray your back gets on big before the summer. Mm. And I pray your belly disappears real soon. Namaste. Uh, we also don't talk enough about fast food restaurants being stingy with the condiments. Okay, see, we talk about portions when it comes to people openly, but don't discuss portions when it comes to food openly. And we don't discuss fast food restaurants being stingy with the condiments openly as much as we should. We tend to complain in the moment to ourselves or whoever we are with, but we don't trip too hard because unless you done left the restaurant, you can pretty much get more of what you want in regards to condiments, okay? When it comes to food, it kind of is what it is. You have to take what they give you pretty much, but if you want more ketchup, you can get more ketchup. If you had Chick-fil-A and want more polygamy sauce, you can get more polygamy sauce. When you at Chipotle and you want more guac, you can get more guac if you ask for it. And you pay for it. Well, Aaron Brown apparently didn't get that memo because Aaron Brown got into an argument with a store employee over a portion of guacamole that was not to his liking. And this happened. Let's go to Fox 2 Detroit for the report, please. Chaos at Chipotle. A customer shoots an employee. Witnesses say it all started out as an argument over food. A source close to the investigation says it was specifically over guacamole. I was just eating a bowl and I heard shouting. And then I look over, they're arguing, and they started fighting. And then we heard a gunshot and just ran out as quick as we could. The employee, a 21-year-old man, shot in the leg but expected to survive. Meanwhile, the suspect. He took his time getting out. I saw him just walk out to his car, close the door, and just drive off. Like, he didn't he didn't speed off or anything. It was, it was weird to see. Police arrested the 32-year-old man in a parking lot not far away. Now, of course, they closed the doors as soon as police got there. Uh, once 911 was called, the scene was secured. Meanwhile, no word on whether or not the guy took his food on his way out. <laughs> what the fuck? That was crazy. No word and not on whether or not the guy took his food on the way out. That's what y'all heard about. Aaron Brown shot a 21-year-old Chipotle employer because his portion of guac was not to his liking. Listen, the all fast food workers, retail workers, this is your Uncle Charlotte talking. I've told you this before. If you're working at a fast food restaurant and a man comes behind the counter and starts fixing his own food, just calmly walk to the back and call the proper authorities. Okay, there is absolutely zero reason for you to be getting beat down over a damn burrito bowl. Let that man have that. Chipotle ain't dying for you. Chipotle ain't paying for your funeral. They're not taking care of your hospital bills. By the way, I don't care if you own the franchise. Clearly, if this man, okay, is complaining about guacamole and then comes from behind the counter to fix his old food, then he knows something you don't. And in this case, he knows he got a pistol and a lot of pain he's ready to project on anyone who gets in his way. And that's what happened here. Every day of our life, when we leave the house, all we hope to do is avoid the crazy. So when you see the crazy, you should just avoid the crazy. All right. This man hasn't gotten what he wanted out of life ever. This man has not received enough from society, not enough love, not enough mental health care and not enough success. And now you don't want to give him enough guacamole. 
and got the nerve to try to stop him when he comes from comes behind the counter when he's making his own just to make his own tacos. Now you got choke slammed because he choke slammed the guy before he shot him. Now you got choke slammed the way the Undertaker choke slammed the Rocket WrestleMania the other night, and you got shot. You know, here at the Breakfast Club, we have one of our former interns who has uh, risen up the ranks in this business. You see him on TV on Wild and Out. You probably have seen his stand up, and he works here at the Breakfast Club. He's the president of the Fat Lives Matter Committee, commander of the Big Mac Brigade. Big Mac is here. Yeah. Uh, Big Mac was talking to me, and he has a perspective of this situation. I've heard him complain about portion sizes and folks being stingy with the condiments. Big Mac, the floor is yours. Yeah, this is just uh, to let everybody know this is a warning. Mm hmm. And this is a PSA to let y'all know that the big backs are biting back, mm. okay? Y'all keep holding off on all these condiments and napkins. And and listen, we tired of it. Mm. One ketchup, one barbecue sauce for a 10-piece, it's not enough. Mm. We tired mm. of that. Y'all, go ahead. Try not filling up the fries to the top. Mm -hmm. You got to fill up the fries to enough where there's some in the bag. Bag fries is the best. If, if I don't get bag fries, oh, yeah, now nah, it might be a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dare you I dare you to tell me The ice machine is broke Still Okay cool <laughs> We Big bags are biting back mm. That's what we doing And look Jamaican restaurants Oxtails We want them drowned In the gravy mm. <laughs> We don't have to ask For extra gravy You know we want We don't want no ashy oxtails mm. <laughs> We want to drown in it uh, I disagree with God. everything That Big Mac just said Jesus. Please give Aaron Brown Really? Please let Remy Give Aaron Brown The biggest hee-haw please Hee-haw Hee-haw <laughs> <laughs> Stupid mother Are you Dumb. Right. Big back attack. Oh. Damn right. Big backs fight back. <laughs> right. Well, why Big need a back bite back. back? Don't you use your shirt? Because oh, um, the shirt got all the other. That's just extra. You know uh, what I mean? Uh, the napkins are for your face. Max okay. said he want portions as big as his back. That is, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. Damn it. Okay. I'm going to talk to you after this, Mac. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you in trouble Ooh. Yep. All right. well when we come back We got a special guest joining us Yes Alice Randall man She has a new book out called My Black Country A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present and Future Alice Randall is the first uh, black woman to write A number one country song She wrote XXX O's 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 Patricia Yearwood How does that song go you know No I don't But her X's book and O's What I said no, X, no. X, X, O, O, O. It's three X's, three O's. It's know, X's but, and O's. But just X's, like X's and O's. O's. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> X, 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 Why y'all just stopping me now? Y'all like, oh, oh, well, you know what That's I mean. the first time I heard yeah. you say it. But uh, Alice Rando will be here to discuss her new book, My Black Country. For all of y'all out there that is uh, that are that are, that are are learning about black people in country music because of Beyonce, Alice Rando has been telling these stories for a long time. So all her right. book is out right now. We'll, we'll be back to discuss with her. All right. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. The author of My Black Country, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future. Ladies and gentlemen, Alice Randall. Welcome. Good morning. I am so glad to be on The Breakfast Club. It's like being on America's front porch. Hey. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to start that. using that one. Hey, use that as imaging, Taylor. That's right. America's, <laughs> Club's America's Front Porch. Alice, man, you have such a storied history. Um, you are the first black woman to ever write a number one country song. You mm. wrote Trisha Yearwood's XXX O's O's O's. Right? Yeah, X's and O's. X's and O's. Way back in 1994, but you know... That ain't that far way back uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, At least I was born. Yeah. I was two, but I was born. <laughs> but, but, you know... Um, Jess, I have been 41 years in country and Western music. Mm -hmm. I came as a black woman to Nashville in 1983. So this is my 41st year. And it's wild. I had songs recorded. I'm glad you shout out to that one that was two weeks at number one. Mm -hmm. And it put Miss Aretha Franklin's name in it. A country song got the two weeks. Aretha Franklin and Patsy Cline. And we put Aretha first. That's wow. amazing. Like back then. And it was um, all about the you know money. It's, it's hard to keep the balance up between love and money. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you about that in a second. But I wrote my first song was recorded uh, two years after I arrived in Nashville. So that was 1985. Mm -hmm. And that was a B-side of a number one. So I had songs recorded in the 80s, 90s, aughts, 10s, and 20s. And Char, you were one of the first people to ever recognize that. Wow. Oh, I love that. And if I can just say one thing here, that black man, D4 Bailey, is the father of black country, in my opinion, the father of country mm -hmm. radio. You and Lil Harden is the mother. And Lil Harden is the mama. That's right. Okay. And Ray Charles is their genius child. That's right. And um, 
I think that uh, Charlie Pride is Deport's side child. Mm. And Herb Jeffries, the bronze buckaroo in all those 30s and 40s black westerns sing- with singing cowboys. He's Lil Stepchild. He's right. His first family of black country. I love that. You see that? You got Herb Jeffries, mm. Charlie Pride, Lil Harden, the Ford Belly, Ray Charles. Beautiful. That's amazing. And Beyonce in this moment, metaphorically, is Ray Charles' genius child, the daughter who may eclipse the father. Mm. Ooh, explain explain that. Why is, why is Beyonce the daughter of Ray Charles? In this case, because when 1963, when Modern Sounds and Country and Western drops, that's Ray Charles' country album. So mm-hmm. first of all, Ray Charles put out an amazing country album mm-hmm. in 1963. I used to cha-cha around the living room with my black Auntie Mary Frances, who I love more than life. Mary Frances, I would dance to Ray Charles. Mm-hmm. Ray Charles Country. He deconstructed and reconstructed country music according to his own aesthetics. Now, mm-hmm. you need to understand that Ray Charles grew up listening to the Opry. His mama would let him stay up late to hear it on Saturday nights because back in the 40s, 30s, 20s, when my family was coming up, there was no black radio in Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. There was not. We were culturally redlined out of owning radio stations. Mm-hmm. So if you were black and you were living in the rural South, you could hear great live music in the juke joints, in the church, in your home. But the only thing you were really hearing in the rural South on the radio was a lot of country and some classical music. Mm-hmm. So black people knew country. And just remember, as my daddy said, we were actually playing on it. We can now document that, that there was two black geniuses on Blue Yolo number nine. And that doesn't even count the people passing that were playing in these bands. Mm-hmm. So we knew country and we knew that we had invented the banjo, that a lot of the things are best in country, mm-hmm. that it was a black person who taught Hank Williams how to play a lot of his early songs, Lefty Frizzell, that the Carter family, that they were taught by Esley Riddle. Esley Riddle was a black man who taught the Carter family their first songs a lot of their chords. Some people... Hold on, did, which Carter family now? Because you know we are thinking Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Jay-Z and, and Beyonce. Well, um, as it's been traditionally told in the white world, when they say about the first family of country, they say Jimmy Rogers is the papa. Now, okay. I just told you he was really working with Lil and Louie. Absolutely. And they say that the mama is... Uh, Maybell card, Mother Maybell. But mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you that May- Mother Maybell, she had a way of playing that's called Carter Family Scratch, the way she used mm-hmm. two fingers, three fingers. Well, this man, Esley Riddle, he was in a terrible accident when he was young, lost a leg. Then he almost committed suicide or maybe tried to commit suicide and he lost a couple fingers. Jesus. Mm-hmm. He played with three fingers before the Carter family was playing. He's the one that taught them the first song. So I'm just saying, who really invented Carter family mm-hmm. scratch? We can't prove that. But is it the man who actually had that we know that they acknowledge and they played with him all through their history later? Mm-hmm. And they have, there's a story that they tell that he's called Esley Riddle because their children could not pronounce Leslie. Well, I found him in the U.S. Census as Esley, E-S-L-I-E, long before he ever met the Carters. Mm. So there's questions about this because our history is not well documented. So the cowboy Carter obviously speaks right now for Beyonce Knowles. And I, Mrs. Carter, I don't know that she is at all signing to the original Carter family. Mm -hmm. But what I sign to is, I'm not interested in that Carter family right now because they've had a lot of attention. I'm really interested in Esley Riddle, who's a black man who came from that same place. Mm -hmm. And his story has not been told. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get in my black country. D Ford's story hasn't been told. Lil Hardin's story hasn't been told. You you know, it's interesting. um, And and my, my guy, Bobby Bones, he does, he's the big nationally syndicated you know, country morning guy, salute to Bobby Bones uh, out in Nashville. He talked about the banjo and how you can't even talk about country music without talking about black people's contributions to country music from the very beginning. So my question is, when did it shift? When did people just make it country a white thing, so to speak? Well, there's two pieces that one, I agree with your friend Bobby Bones that my definition of country music is Celtic, English, Irish, Scottish ballad form storytelling Mm -hmm. plus black influences plus evangelical Christianity. Country can't be country without black influences. Without black influences, country is just folk music. Mm -hmm. Now, some of those black influences are black gospel from L.A. and the South. Some of the black influences are the banjo. Some of it is the way notes are bent when they're sung. They're coming out of the blues. And if you don't have the evangelical Christianity, you might be in a country blues. Mm Because the big difference is, and I said, my childhood, I had a very bad mother. And 
I had a great daddy and a really bad mother. Mm -hmm. So I don't love the blues. The blues is too, I, my daughter loves the blues. The blues is too hard for me. Depressing. I need some hope. Mm -hmm. wow. I need, with my tragedy, I need the reality and then I need some hope. And co black country has both of those things. Mm -hmm. The hope, because it could be, I'm just going to be up in heaven and tell Jesus how you done me. Mm -hmm. It could be, you're going to be in hell and some burning fires and I'm going to be, that there's some hope. There's some revenge in mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And I like the hope. I like the revenge. That blues has a little bit of experience of we are walking on hell and earth, but we're finding some joy. We're making some joy in the hell on earth. Yeah. But black country says we're going to get somewhere else. But country isn't country. And on, this is the little teacher in me. I hate to say it. I have to do this one because I'm a professor at Vanderbilt. Where I have a course on black country. And I've been teaching that course since 2015. Mm. My first course country, lyric, and American culture I've been teaching since 2006. I used to say it was musical miscegenation, and that wasn't my phrase. I adopted that one. But here we know that country requires blackness to be country. And one of the examples you see on Cowboy Carter is that song Blackbird, which is a remake oh, yeah. of a, a Beatles song. Without the black voices on it, it's a folk song. Mm -hmm. You add wow. those black wow. women's voices right. and wow. their black aesthetics, it's country. What yeah. makes it country? The black gospel yeah. you hear sound that they bring to it. Mm -hmm. I love my Raina Roberts on there. My students found her for me when she was only like three weeks when she was on TikTok. I had students rush in and show her to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I've been loving her for some time now. The world is discovering her now. Wow. Yeah, Raina is uh, talented. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we got more with Alice Randall when we come back. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Alice Randall. She has a new book, My Black Country and Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future. I got a question. What did you think of Beyonce's album? Did you listen to it in full? What were your thoughts? Oh, I have listened to it many times. I actually love it in this particularly. As I said, I'm 64. This is sort of my birthday party on The Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. I'll be mm -hmm. 65 May 4th. Hey, nice. well, happy birthday. And you know, when I arrived here 41 years ago in Nashville, I wanted to get as number one, and I got a number one. Yeah. I wanted to spotlight black women who have really contributed. I'm proud to say I wrote the first major article on Linda Martell. Everybody talking about her now. I've published that in 2010. I'm in the documentary her granddaughter is making about her. I wow. love Linda, Linda Martell. I had to fight to get that space for her back in 2010 when people weren't talking. And I'm thrilled that Beyonce has brought her to a huge world. My article got a lot of attention, but in a narrow way. Now the whole world knows who Linda Martell is. Yeah. That that documentary, yeah. her granddaughter's been struggling to get made, picking up a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. Now that thing is going to be made and made right. So I am absolutely thrilled that Beyonce has taken country to a global audience. But there's a third thing. So I wanted to spotlight these black people. I could do that in this book. I wanted my own number one. But I wanted to see, and Jess, this is going to be you and me here. I wanted to see a black woman at the top of the country charts. Yeah. Because the day I arrived in Nashville in 1983, Charlie Pride had already been up there 29 times. Hey. Mm. Ray Charles was acknowledged. I saw, I was in the room when he played Seven Spanish Angels in Nashville in a back small room for DJs. He got to go to the top of the charts. There are so many black men who have been to the number one spot. Now, just talk, call the name of the two most important. Charlie Pride, Ray Charles. But Darius Rucker, I'm not even a name anymore because yeah. there's so many. And there has not been one black, black woman. woman. Black women have absolutely, I have a song called Small Towns or Swallow for Girls mm -hmm. in country. And that's true. It's hard on the country radio, even for all women. Small towns are cursed back here. Are you ready? A lot smaller yeah. for black women. Yeah. If small towns are smaller for girls, they're really smaller for black girls. And Music City is a small town. So I wanted to see a black woman at the top of it because it's acknowledging that we are worth our beauty our significance mm -hmm. and i thought i was going to retire without seeing it so cowboy carter for me personally is so important because it is a hallelujah moment it is a juneteenth moment it is good mm -hmm. news at long last mm. but my daughter says caroline randall williams good news at long last is still good news can we talk about divine alignment because you started my black country a while ago so when you're writing the book and you know you know your book is about to be published you get the date it's you know 
April, but then all of a sudden you start to hear these Beyonce Texas hold them and Beyonce may be doing a country album. Like, what did that feel like? It felt that what you just said, mm -hmm. divine alignment. Mm. Because this project I started 41 years ago and really this part of it started in deep five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a pure project for me. This is my life work, the history of black people and country putting it back into the 17th century. And it's just a wild alignment because it has created a global conversation, a global conversation that I spent 41 years preparing for, but mm -hmm. actually started even earlier than that at Harvard in 1977, when I'm starting to look, studying the Harlem Renaissance with Nathan Huggins and starting to try to prove my father's black Detroit gossip was true, chasing that down. Because back then there was no scholarship that told us that the banjo was a black instrument. Back then there was no scholarship that said Lil Hardin was really on that record. But I have traced down these oral histories that other scholars have and now we know that Lil Hardin was absolutely on that record. Mm -hmm. That the black gossip of Motown was correct. Mm -hmm. So the alignment though, instead of this being some small book, if you're on the Breakfast Club, I'm going to say, I want you out there getting my black country. I want to be lifted up by black readers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, I have always, with all of my books, starting with The Wind on Gone, I have loved, one of my readers told me, is the literary equivalent of prissy slapping Scarlet back. Dang. <laughs> I have to just stop and tell this story. I was in North Carolina. Black woman librarian had bought all these books for the State Library of uh, North Carolina of mine. But we were coming home after the big reading, and I'm thinking back to my hotel, this is not the way we went. Like, I don't know where we are going. It's late at night. We've got dinner, reading. And she drove me and we sat outside a house. She pulled up in front of a house in a fancy neighborhood. And she said, my mother worked as a maid in this house almost all my life. They made her come in the back door. They made me come in the back door. They loved Gone with the Wind. And I cannot tell you what it means to me that you wrote this book attacking everything that, that valued that and the way they treated her. Mm. I waited mm. this long. She said, I felt she such joy. But the number, but more than that, I had women who were ongoingly working as domestic servants telling me this book meant so much to them. And when I read the book, that one out loud, and I read this one, because I'm not an actress, I'm not a performer, I don't have great voices like all three of you. Mm -hmm. I read this one because my grandparents couldn't read or write. My grandmother could read a tiny bit. My grandfather couldn't read or write even his own name. I adore my grandparents. They were brilliant people and storytellers. Just never had a day of school in Alabama. Mm. I read my books and make sure there's audio books because I know a lot of brilliant people can't read or write. Mm -hmm. And that I want them. I'm working as much for them as the people who have all these degrees yeah. and whatever. <laughs> That's amazing. Look, chapter six in your book, Big Dreams, Big Hits, Big Mistakes. Without spoiling it, you know, because I know it's a lot of information in this book. You keep saying, look, read this book. No, we're going to read it. <laughs> but I just, can you tease a little bit what, like, mistakes would... In the um, Big Dreams, that part of it was the first one, the first big things I did was a song called Big Dream that I co-wrote with my daughter when she was just little. And it got into this movie called The Thing Called Love. It was River Phoenix's last mm -hmm. big movie. And the big mistake was I literally signed that thing that I should never have signed. Got gotcha. you. So you sold you Big Dreams and you signed the contract without reading it. But the other good thing was that I got to write novels. I might have just been a country songwriter, and now mm -hmm. I get to be a country songwriter and a novelist right. and a memoirist. And I love my six books. That's, That's right. right. I've got one about a black spy family. Oh, hold up now, for real. Yes. Okay. And, I, and I, if, Sherman, if you ever get involved in, in that kind of movie production, I've got a great one, Rebel Yell, about mm. a black spy family. Mm. I've got some really cool books. Oh, he's going to read <laughs> all of them, girl. Absolutely. Listen, they got to go get the book, man. Absolutely. Alicia yeah, Randall, too. My Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future. It's the latest release off my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing. But also, uh, from 7 to 8.30, uh, you can catch me and Alice Randall and Roseanne Cash will be at the Brooklyn public library from 7 to 8.30 uh, having more conversations about my black country. Yes, and I'm so excited. I hope to see so much of the Breakfast Club out there. Absolutely. I came all the way up from Nashville That's to right. meet some new people. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Char's country cousin. Come up to town. <laughs> the auntie, country auntie. That's I need right. you. We need you. That's all right. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. What's the over-under on this new Metro Boomin' Future project that's supposed to come out this Friday. 
I still don't trust you. What's the over under on there being more shots from somebody? Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't think so. Because we we still don't trust you. Part two. What if they got? <laughs> what if they got a record with Pusha T? We still don't trust you. Oh. <laughs> That's what it's called, though. We still don't trust. Oh you. my god. Yes. Mm. What if they got a record with Pusha T throwing shots? Oh my god. I'm just saying. That's yeah. crazy. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying. And all these people that unfollowed him. I'm just saying. Unfollow who? Drake. Oh my god. Mm. It'll be interesting. I'm just saying. I wonder what that means. I'm gonna follow him. Let me go on my phone and. Unfollow. And then it's, it's silly. Yeah, well, let's right, get to Jess with the mess. Okay. Okay. News is real, brothers. Lions, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture ship. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. Oh, y'all are cutting to my time major. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Danny Lay's brother is seeking permission to inform rapper the baby of his lawsuit through a newspaper. Mm -mm. Look, so remember the fight that they got into a um, couple years back where uh, uh, allegedly the baby and his friends jumped Danny Lay's brother. His mm -hmm. name is Brandon, right? I think we've seen the video. Wasn't it yeah, the video? Yeah, it was the video or whatever, oh, right? But the baby has said that he, initi he initiated the fight. Brandon, mm -hmm, the brother, mm -hmm. initiated the fight, right? So, <laughs> Bill said that he... Uh, Brandon Bills, that's his name. Mm -hmm. He said that he hired... He's been trying to serve this guy for years. He even hired a private investigator, but he could not track the baby down, right? So, he officially asked the court permission to serve the baby by placing a notice in the local newspaper. Imagine the baby reading the newspaper with some coffee, finding out I can that see he that. served... Really? I can see the baby in the morning waking up reading the Charlotte Observer. You yes, <laughs> you I can see that. You think the baby gonna yes. read the newspaper? <laughs> yes. That's a smart Carolina brother, absolutely. I, okay, I'm not saying he's not smart. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm trying to figure out why he can't find the baby. We see the baby all the time. <laughs> all, the time. <laughs> all the time. He be at the drive through the whole time. Baby, able to find the baby. Auntie jumping in the car with him, wanting to have sex with him. <laughs> concerts. You should have auntie serve him. You can serve the baby. <laughs> but he said that all, through all his work, he have not been able to successfully track him down. You so. ain't looking for the baby. Baby. Yeah. And you probably shouldn't after what we witnessed. I know. <laughs> Jesus. The judge has yet to rule on Bill's uh recent motion though. So what he's doing for he's doing for getting beat up? Yeah, he that yep, that's what he's doing. But in the video, wasn't he yeah, they said wasn't it was, he the instigator? He had, if yeah, I remember yeah, correctly, yeah, that was so long ago. Uh -huh. guys, he guys, initiated the fight. We're forgetting that the baby has a baby with his sister. Sister. So mm -hmm. he could just leave it at the house. He could wait for the baby to come to pick up the kid. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. you're that's right. all you gotta do. You're right. They gotta go nowhere. Yeah, I didn't even think about You gotta that. pick up you're the baby. Right. That's crazy. Wait, right? wait, hold on now. The baby <laughs> The baby gotta pick up his baby. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> all right. From his baby <laughs> sister. Right. Do we know the that's baby's right. name? His real baby? name? Yeah. Uh, Kirk something I forgot Oh Kirk Oh all right, yeah, yeah Little Kirk Cause it's Bob and Okay yeah, alright I got yeah. you Jonathan they, Jonathan Lindale Kirk Jonathan Lindale mm -hmm. Kirk Alright I got you Eva Marcel disables comments After people spoke about Her weight loss Um, So she sat down With Tamara Hall And she was talking They were talking about um How people on social media Immediately uh, Began expressing their concern Once they saw her photos um, At the BET Awards drop um, some people were saying, is she okay? Why she looks sick? She looks not well, losing too much weight. Her face looks gaunt, hollow. And then he was like, Ozempic or whatever. Uh, then she talked about it. I lost weight just naturally going through life. And I found myself depressed. Um, before my divorce, through my divorce, trying to just navigate and rediscover who am I? I yeah, so basically, for the people who are wondering, was she sick? Nah, she wasn't sick. Listen, divorce, breakups, all of that, heartbreaks, that can that can play a, a big, big, big toll on you mentally, yeah, 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 physically, yeah, course, right. and all of that, you know? And she was saying, even before her divorce, leading up to her divorce, she was just losing weight, and she didn't even really realize it mm -hmm. um, until she, because she thought she looked cute in the pictures. You know, when you're looking at yourself every day, you're not noticing it. And so the comments is what really made her pay attention, and mm -hmm. she was like, oh, wow. But no, she's not sick. She was just dealing with life, guys. She was depressed. That's, so. that's why you got to mind your business. Yeah. Because when it comes to weight, it works both ways. Big-bellied women aren't pregnant. Yeah. And, you know, women that have lost weight are not sick. Are sick. Yeah. Are on Ozempic. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's stress. Exactly. You know? S stress. What I said? Stress, honey. Oh. I don't know what's going on with you. So, um, a cup. This just, and this is exclusive news. Uh -oh. um, 
my dear brother Tyrese is feeling some way and he wanted to get some things off his chest this morning. Do we We're not that? talking about no freeloading baby mamas either, so don't even jump in my comments about that. I'm mm -hmm. always and have always took care of mine. You gonna leave me and you wanna take my life with you? That's mm -hmm. not happening. I'm gonna fight you to the end of the earth. But as far as what mine need, they gonna have more than enough. It's not my job to take care of you and your life and go lavish your lifestyle and you decided to leave me. You gonna sit across from your new boyfriend, your new fiance, your new husband and be pimping off my money while this are laying up in something that I'm paying for and driving around in and dinners and vacations that I'm paying for. I'm not doing it. But pertaining to my child or my children, they gonna always have more than what they need. Tyrese is still on live right now going in about it. So if y'all, I, I just cut that from the beginning. Where's it coming from? When he first something started. New? Man, knock it off. You don't it's, need no context for Tyrese. You know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, he's talking about his ex-wife. Exactly. It seems is, like, no, know, but like did something happen new in court? We, we don't know. It's, it's still on. So oh. we got to go tune in. Um, and for y'all who, who want to hear the rest of it, just go to his page. He's on live right now currently. Uh, we don't know when it's going to end, but I just wanted to shed some light on that and seal that and uh, send that brother healing energy. Did Tyrese ever put out the Beautiful Pain album or they never came out? Mm, I believe it is. Oh, the, hold the, on, let me the, say. The, the theme of that album is supposed to be about his recent divorce mm -hmm. from, from Samantha. So, you know, I would rather Tyrese give us the music. Beautiful Pain. Everything else handle it in the court. Ranch and stuff, handle that in the court. Yeah, no, I don't think the album came out. Give us no. the music. Mm -hmm. thought, dang, it's not... No, it's not. It's sure not. No, it's I not thought right. he came. He came up here like what six months ago and said it was okay. Well, maybe he's he's just in such you know a funk he can't even get it out. Maybe. Mm. I'm so sad for him. All right, y'all, but let's go watch the rest of this live. That was just with the mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the People's Choice mix is up next. Let's go. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Just Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Uh, I was out last night. I'm tired. Daughter went to go see Olivia Rodriguez. Uh, what is it? Rodrigo? Olivia Rodrigo. Yes. Rodrigo. I'm tired. I am tired. She had a great time. She had an amazing time. Mm -hmm. So uh, salute to Olivia Rodrigo. She put on an amazing show. My kids loved it. Had a ball amazing. last night. Salute to them. That's right. Salute to Olivia Rodrigo. And make sure you go get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening Saturday, April 27th in Atlanta, Georgia, man. Wallow and Gilly on that stage. Jess Hilarious doing Carefully Reckless on that stage. Mandy and Wheezy with Horrible Decisions is on that stage. The Paul Mines Podcast with Dre and Lex. Paul Mines is going to have a special guest, too. Uh, we can't announce it yet, but I can't wait to announce it. They're going to have a special guest on this show, though. So, uh hey. Um, that's just a few people that's going to be there so make sure you go get your tickets blackeffect.com slash podcast festival uh, the baller alert show going to be there as well Debbie Brown with Deeply Well or you can go to eventbrite.com to get your tickets man so go get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening April 27th in ATL shorty all right. When we come back, positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. Yes, and I got to salute to the good sister, Alice Randall, man. She came up here today to discuss her new book, My Black Country, A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past, Present, and Future, which is the latest release of my book in print, Black Privilege Publishing. Um, go get that now. Available everywhere you buy books. And tonight, uh, myself and Alice Randall, along with Roseanne Cash, we will be at the Brooklyn Public Library from 7 to 8 30 p.m. talking uh about my black country so we'll see you there tonight all right we'll leave us on a positive note yes uh i have a positive note and that's why my black country by alice randall is so important man this this positive note comes from george orwell the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. But guess what? You can't even understand your history if you don't know your history. So go get My Black Country by Alice Randall so you can know black people's history and country music. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?